long. It's Tess. An allegation's been made. We have to act on it. She's guilty. But why would she do it? Now you've done it. All new Blue Healers, Wednesday, 8.30 on 7. Tonight, a 24-year-old man granted bail after the bashing death of his cousin outside a Mackay home. Regional centres to benefit from a new Singapore trade agreement. And with Sunday, Reef Festival organisers toast the success of weekend festivals. Across Mackay, the Whit Sundays and the Coalfields, this is 7 Local News with Rob Bruff. Good evening, thanks for joining us. The Supreme Court has granted Shane Scott bail after being formally charged with the murder of a Sunshine Coast father in Mackay. It's alleged Russell Dean died from injuries in a fight outside a Romeo Street house on Friday night. 24-year-old Shane Andrew Scott faced court this morning. He's charged with his cousin's murder after he was allegedly involved in a fight in South Mackay. At this stage, we're really not sure what the fight was about. Um, the victim was asked to leave the premises, though, and the fight has occurred as a result. The victim was Russell John Dean, a 31-year-old father from Malula on the Sunshine Coast. Police claim he'd been living at the Romeo Street house last week. Mr Dean and a friend returned to the house on Friday night. It's alleged Mr Dean then became involved in an altercation with Shane Scott, Scott's brother and father. Mr Dean's friend took off. The pair never saw each other again. I believe prior to the ambulance attending, they'd attempted to uh, conduct CPR. Their efforts were in vain. Mr Dean died on the roadway. A post-mortem will determine the exact cause of death. Mr Dean's family travelled to Mackay over the weekend to identify his body. He leaves behind an eight-year-old daughter. As you can imagine, they were upset and grieving for the loss of their son. Shane Scott was granted bail by the Supreme Court in Rockhampton late this afternoon. He'll reappear in the Magistrates Court on Wednesday to set a committal date. It's unclear if anyone else will be charged. In the meantime, police want to talk to Mr Dean's acquaintance on Friday night and anyone else with information. Rebecca Nardi, Seven News. Federal Trade Minister Mark Vale has called on local National Party delegates to publicly show their support for the government's three cents a kilo levy on sugar. Mr Vale told a central council meeting in Mackay that the government will do everything it can to ensure the survival of the sugar industry. We're not likely to go to the polls for another year and a half, but the state opposition is already in campaign mode. We are probably about 12 months from the next state election here in Queensland. We're 12 months away from offering the people of Queensland an alternative to the Beattie government. The Queensland National Party held its central council meeting in Mackay at the weekend. Federal Trade Minister Mark Vale held a captive audience. He urged delegates to support the coalition's three cents a kilo levy on sugar. I know it's not the silver bullet, it's not the answer, the absolute answer to what you want in the sugar industry, but what we've got to try and do as a nation is ensure that the sugar industry in Australia survives through to the point where we can get more equitable access to those markets. The comments coincided with Minister Vale signing off on a free trade agreement with Singapore. He's hopeful it'll help secure a similar deal with the US when trade talks begin in a fortnight. Mr Vale also reconfirmed his government's support for an ethanol industry. We must give producers confidence that this fledgling industry has a viable and strong future. The barriers to biofuels report should be released later this month. Erin Edwards, 7 News. A Mackay property valuer says council should consider introducing a differential rate system in the city heart to give some relief to struggling property owners. The mayor says the proposal's not off the cards but couldn't happen until after the next budget. 
there's no hiding the city heart's pain. Empty shops are still without tenants and in the last few months we've seen a number of forced property sales. Valuer Jeff Dodd says property owners are being crippled even further by high council rates compared to the achievable rental income. The affordability of, of maintaining their properties or of uh, meeting their um, their mortgage payments, um, it just puts further pressure on the, uh, on the city heart. For some small property owners, their rates make up a third of their achievable rental. Mr Dodd says something needs to be done. One suggestion is to review the unimproved value of properties. Another is for council to give relief through a differential rate system. They can apply a lower rate per dollar to the properties in the city heart and, and, and in this manner reduce their rates. Mackay Mayor Julie Boyd says the proposal's not off the cards, but Council will have to wait for the City Centre Revitalisation Task Force to report back later this month. If the task force recommends differential rates, they still couldn't be introduced until after the next budget. Other ratepayers would also have to pick up the shortfall. Rebecca Nardi, 7 News. Tough new laws cracking down on hoons are now in force. Police can confiscate cars for 48 hours if they catch the driver illegally drag racing. If the same person is caught again, their vehicle could be impounded for up to three months. Cars will be confiscated permanently if offenders do the wrong thing three times. And those who like it loud when it comes to car stereos can also be directed to cease using the stereo for 12 hours. The new laws are effective from today. A 19-year-old miner has been seriously injured after a wall of coal trapped him underground for more than an hour. Workplace Health and Safety are investigating the incident, which happened at Oakey Creek yesterday. Both the man's legs were broken. He's recovering in Rockhampton Hospital. Organisers are planning more free entertainment as part of next year's with Sunday Reef Festival. A $120,000 commitment from Fantasy Cruises has helped cement the future of the festival, which roared to life over the weekend. The two-week festival is about promoting what the Witch Sundays has to offer. Hundreds lined Ailey's Main Street to witness a kaleidoscope of colour in the Rotary Street procession. The reef theme kick-starting a weekend of festivities. I think it can only get bigger and better, particularly as a consequence now of having the fantasy sponsorship. That means that we can now start to put more money into increasing the events, increasing various other bits and pieces, putting on more free shows for people. A picture-perfect Sunday lured a good crowd to Channel 7's Food and Wine Spectacular. Public liability concerns prompted a change of venue from the lagoon. The day still labelled an overwhelming success. Eight early restaurants tantalised the taste buds 13 winemakers kept the bubbly flowing. This place is just jumping today, it's fantastic. I've um, got a favourite with the Rosemonts, with the Sauvignon Blanc, but it's beautiful. Well, we've tried uh, some different stuff here with the salmon and the uh, peppered pineapple, some gazpacho oyster shots, yeah, it's and been very good. Early November is traditionally a lean period for many early traders and accommodation houses. The Reef Festival seen as a way of helping fill the void. Last November was after September the 11th, crash of Anset and all those sorts of things, but we still got, during that festival period, an increase in turnover of 20 to 40 per cent. The Reef Festival winds up next weekend with an air show and the unique cabaret on the jetty at Shoot Harbour. In Ely Beach, Ken Furtick, 7 News. Thanks, Ken. Now after the break tonight, some timely advice for healthcare workers and Moranbar digs deep to help one of their own. in paradise when he discovers the many beauties of Fiji and he reveals a romantic hideaway. I think you're gonna like this. Laura takes you on a breathtaking tour of Spain in luxury. Shelley's found the ultimate tropical escape for the whole family in Queensland. Once you've paid the price, everything else comes for free. And Sophie discovers a fairy tale farm stay in South Australia when Toyota presents The Great Outdoors tonight at 7.30. The CHR Job Board presents the latest jobs available in your area. To get all the details of these jobs and many more, just log on to the CHR Job Board website and register your details. 
employers to get your vacancies listed with Queensland's number one employment agency, CHR, and have access to the highest rating job board in Queensland, you can also log on or just contact your local CHR office. Remember, better people come from CHR. There are many rewards in living a long, healthy life. A healthy heart gives you a chance to enjoy them. And one of the best ways to help maintain the health of your entire cardiovascular system is to enjoy a diet rich in omega-3, a nutrient found in fish. And now in fresh milk. Brown's Heart Plus. The low-fat milk with omega-3 and great taste. The new Holden Ute, a force of nature. The Whit Sunday Fantasy Reef Festival Week 2 sees fantastic deals on fantasy reef trips all week. On Friday, enjoy a seafood extravaganza at Capers. Saturday, grab a bargain at the Monster Market Day, followed by the Fantasy Masked Carnival Cabaret on the Jetty Shoot Harbour Saturday night. Don't miss the Aviation Field Day at the Whit Sunday Airport over the weekend. Come celebrate our reef, our culture, and our lifestyle at the Whit Sunday Fantasy Reef Festival. Nice having you with us on 7 Local News. Moranbar has cast aside its tough times to help raise nearly $150,000 for Gail Shan at Saturday night's benefit auction dinner. Gail, who attended the night with husband Mac, was stunned by the level of community support. She lost her right arm and damaged the other in a farming accident in August. 300 packed the Moranbar Community Centre to enjoy entertainment by country superstar Graham Connors. One bidder paid $24,000 to have a dam constructed on his property. The CFMEU collected nearly $10,000 for a bronze sculpture, which was given to Gail as a present. Well done. Mackay healthcare workers have been warned about the pitfalls of working with the public. Spiralling public liability insurance costs have made mistakes costly. Workers have been told their best defence is to document everything. Accidents may happen, but when you're a healthcare worker, an innocent mistake could become deadly. Anyone that's working with people need to be aware of all the pitfalls uh, and dangers that they uh, can be subjected to that can result in injury to another person or in some way resulting in that person suing them. About 60 healthcare workers took part in a two-day legal seminar on the duty of care. It covered negligence, ethics, patient complaints, mental health legislation and end-of-life decisions. Organisers say cost-cutting and a lack of training is to blame for errors in the healthcare field. There are huge demands in the healthcare profession uh, of a small number of employees and a large amount of work. People are cutting corners. Uh, instead of going about things in the right way. Spiralling public liability insurance premiums have also made mistakes costly. Workers were told their best defence is to document everything that happens in the workplace. If we can get, uh, say, public servants and others to document correctly, there's going to be more backup when they are facing a jury, which unfortunately does happen. Erin Edwards, 7 News. The auxiliary firefighter accused of lighting unlawful fires in Moranbar has made another brief appearance in Mackay Magistrates Court. 27-year-old Anthony John Parsons was remanded in custody to reappear next month. He'll face a committal hearing on December the 6th for charges of attempting to pervert the course of justice, using the postal service to make threats and five counts of setting fires. There are fears that last month's dust storm may have carried a potentially devastating cane fungal disease across the border. Smut disease has never been detected in Queensland, but if it arrived, it could wipe out 75% of cane varieties grown in the region. It has the potential to turn healthy stools of cane into this. Smut disease has already devastated crops in Western Australia. It's feared the windborne disease may have been carried over the border during last month's dust storm probably the one major disease in the world that the Queensland industry hasn't got 
and um, if, if it came in, you know, there would be a lot of expense involved. The Sugar Experiment Station says three quarters of cane varieties grown in the region are susceptible to the fungus. The Bureau says it wouldn't spread as quickly as orange rust, but it would drastically reduce yields. We, we've got strict quarantine measures in place to stop that movement, but, you know, obviously we, we can't control the movement of, of um, dust and, and windstorms. As a precaution, the BSES says growers should plant disease-resistant crops like Q190 or Q170. If growers suspect their crop is affected, they must contact the Bureau immediately. Meantime, Ratoff, a bait used to kill cane rats, has been approved for emergency use during the breeding season, which starts this month. Growers are reminded they must undertake training before they use the bait. Erin Edwards, 7 News. Bit of a crawl to work this morning for many drivers as the Mackay Hospital Bridge undergoes extensive maintenance. The 60-year-old construction is a popular alternative route for morning commuters. Main Roads District Director Ken Williamson says the bridge will be closed for the next two weeks. The maintenance work includes replacing some existing steel pylons, basic rehabilitation and resurfacing the hospital end of the bridge. Now it's time to get into sport. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Then we get a cowboy becoming a Bronco, eh? Yeah, Matty Harris, Rob. He heads south. Details next. North and Farley Magpie set the pace in senior cricket. And visitors take the cash at the Whitsunday Beach Volleyball Tournament. Hello, Rod Young. After the local news, urgent repairs for the state's fleet of fire trucks after the discovery of a potentially lethal fault. A parade of veterans on the eve of the Melbourne Cup and the world premiere of Harry Potter's next adventure. The training you provide today will ensure our great state's future. Government incentives are available. The best rewards are the benefits to your company and the careers you provide young Queenslanders. We all win. Get an information kit now. There are many rewards in living a long, healthy life. A healthy heart gives you a chance to enjoy them. And one of the best ways to help maintain the health of your entire cardiovascular system is to enjoy a diet rich in omega-3, a nutrient found in fish. And now in fresh milk. Brown's Heart Plus. The low-fat milk with omega-3 and great taste. At Mortgage Choice, we sniff out the best home loan for you. We have over 500 different loans from more than 20 of Australia's top lenders to dig through. Call Graham Bowling at Mortgage Choice, Victoria Street, Mackay on 495 7786. Let's celebrate the opening of the new Noodle Kodak Express Store in Payland Central with two great opening specials. Pay only $1 for a second set of prints during November when you have your films printed on quality Kodak paper with a lifetime guarantee. Then have your favourite photos framed or stored in an album from our huge range and save 20% during November. Yes, all frames and albums are discounted by 20% as part of our opening specials. Call into Caneland Fast Photos and take advantage of these fabulous offers in November from your new Noodle Kodak Express Store in Caneland Central. Are you worried about your performance? Because T.I.N.T. Tin Master has a showroom absolutely packed with the best performance accessories in town. And they're all 20% off. 20% off gauges, carbon fiber dashes, steering wheels, auto care accessories, all spoilers greatly reduced. Plus big savings on chrome temper covers, oil, spitfire air filters and spark plugs, induction and ignition systems, spotted scoops and more. T.I.N.T. Tin Master, absolutely the best performance in town. Tonight's sports report proudly brought to you by Eastman and Richard Real Estate. Open seven days. Talented teenager Matt Harris is the latest Mackay Rugby League player to sever ties with the North Queensland Cowboys and head to a rival NRL club. The Magpies junior has just signed a two-year deal with the Brisbane Broncos. Matt Harris signed with the North Queensland Cowboys after starring with the Magpies A-grade team and St Pat's as a 17-year-old. After struggling to hold a spot in the Cowboys Queensland Cup team, the talented back rower wasn't happy and looked for greener pastures. I had some injury troubles and um, just being away from the family and all that sort of thing up there, it was, it was, uh, it was tough. I didn't really like Townsville itself, but um, as far as football was, it, it wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, just got opportunities elsewhere and uh, decided to take them. There were some memorable moments during his stay in Townsville. After starting for North Queensland at the state trials, Matt was selected to play for Queensland in the 19s against New South Wales 
in the curtain raiser to the second state of origin game this year. Unbelievable, in, un, yeah, indescribable playing. We went down to Sydney, it was just, it was just a total buzz. Um, I didn't even feel like I should have been out there. It was just, it was just wild, yeah. It was the best, best feeling ever. Matt, who starts a primary school teaching course at university early next year, leaves this week to take up a two-year deal with the Broncos. The 18-year-old hopes to follow the likes of Brett Seymour and make it to the top grade. Well, hopefully it's the same for me. Um, I mean, I'd love to, love to get up there as quickly as possible, but uh, uh, I've got a lot to learn and, and, and a lot further to go, so hopefully one day. Pat Hazel, 7 News. Southern volleyballers have taken a lion's share of the cash at the Whitsunday Beach Volleyball Tournament. Shannon Zunker and Jimmy Francis upset the top seeds in the men's final, while Mackay girls Alison Keane and Lisa McGiffin narrowly lost the women's pairs to Brisbane duo Katie Sharp and Lauren McLeod. 22 men's and 13 women's teams contested the Whitsunday tournament, which is part of Queensland Volleyball's pro circuit. Mackay's Lisa McGiffin and Alison Keane overcame a slow start to level the scores at 18 all in the women's final. The locals held match point at 2019, but Katie Sharp and Lauren McLeod refused to concede, the Brisbane pair producing some crucial plays for a come from behind win. That's what we do, we're winning, we're going to make it. That was the aim. We've reached every goal we set so far, so we figured we're not giving up the last one. <laughs> Heading to the Whitsundays was a last-minute decision for the new combination. The duo harbours a desire to take that next step. Yeah, World Tour is what yeah. we're aiming for. We know a lot of Olympians that are on it. They train with us and yeah. we want to get up there. <laughs> In the men's, top seeds Brendan Turner and Steve Anderson were outplayed by another new combination. Jimmy Francis and Shannon Zunker have only played two tournaments together, but are quickly developing into a formidable combination. We got a couple of a key points early in the match, and now we have to hold them out towards the end. Like Shannon said, it's all training for us at the moment. Um, playing against these guys who are, have built up a good base on the national tour, it's nice to get that experience in against them. Zunker and Francis won the final 21-17. In the Whitsundays, Ken Furtick, 7 News. North's and Farley Magpies continue to set the pace after round four Pool Cup cricket action at Harrop Park. North's are yet to drop a game this season and proved too strong for South's, eclipsing the target with five wickets in hand. Farley Magpies claimed the last four Walkerston wickets for six runs to win by two and remain in second spot. And Brothers recorded its first win of the season after bundling out Pioneer Valley for 193. South declared at eight wickets down, setting North a 258 run total for victory. Cameron Buckley was the first to go on 17, bringing Noel Brecknell to the crease. Brecknell and Russell English gave North a great start, sharing a 147 run second wicket partnership. English top scored with 88, while Brecknell bludgeoned 78. Paul Anderson claimed two wickets, but Brad Harriet took the honours with four for 64. Reese Nolan, Mark Nicholson, Jamie Brand and Wayne Cole all reached double figures as North went on to pass South total with five wickets in hand. They scored 325 runs to take first innings points. Pioneer Valley were always going to struggle chasing Brothers total of four declared for 333. Royce Owen and Mark Carter started cautiously, Owen scoring 29 and Carter 15. Mark Kazmorowski and Justin D came together at three for 86. D punishing anything offline, entitling a stylish 71. Kazmorowski and Matt Doolan with 17 runs apiece were the only other batsmen to reach double figures. Michael Woods was the saviour for Farley Magpies in the game against reigning Premier's Walkerston. Walkerston were within 10 runs of victory when Woods intervened. He already had three wickets to his credit and added three more as Walkerston were dismissed, two runs short of Farley Magpies' total. Jockey Butch Mules and trainer Des Booty are singing the praises of Victoria River following her third win in succession at Oralee on Saturday afternoon. Victoria River led all the way to hold out the fast finishing Poocher and Acquire. Butch Mules had no qualms in sending Victoria River to the lead in Saturday's feature race. The four-year-old mare set a solid pace and still had a handy lead as the field turned for home. Poocher and Acquire were the only two dangers. Victoria River straightens up in the Mackay Matsura Cup clear. Trying hard the outside was Poocher, then Darello and Acquire, but they haven't got to Victoria River, who's on top from Poocher, trying hard the outside, then Darello and Acquire down the outside, but Victoria River looking for a hat-trick of wins, he's just in front, Poocher and Acquire try hard the outside, but Victoria River will hang on and win the Mackay Matsura Cup just from Poocher and Acquire. 
Tudor James tried to steal a march on his rivals in the last on the program. Joanne Pugilo let the Gelling race well clear of the field, but he was shortening stride as they headed for home. It's still Tudor James on top. Courty tries hard on the outside. The Rocky Galloper trying to pick them up. And between them, Will Crow trying to get through. Will Crow squeezes through on the inside of Courty. Kia Lea flying late. It's Courty just in front. Courty. The Rockhampton Gallopers won the last from Will Crow and Kia Lea. There's a five race program at Uli tomorrow to celebrate Melbourne Cup Day. John Walden likes glowing profit in the locals. He's tipping Media Puzzle to win the big one. Well, I like the chances of Rain Gauge. I'm going for Media Puzzle too, Rob. Mm -hmm. I think he can win. And a roughy about 60 or 70 to 1, Maguire. Okay, well, you've been in pretty good form too. A hot form. All right, well, good luck tomorrow. No worries, you too. Thanks, mate. Now, the finance news. The market had a strong rise, jumping 43 points, thanks to a rebound on US markets. Gold and the dollar are up. Commonwealth is down. Telstra added four cents, despite recent troubles. Locally, Suncorp Metway led the way, adding seven cents. News Corp is Avian Abro Morgan's stock of the day. And the details on the weather right after the break here on 7 Local News. Stevens didn't expect this. This is not good. This is not good. But what happened next was totally unexpected. Don't worry, we'll sort it out. Only Amy gives you your own personal client manager who'll look after all your home repairs and replacements from start to finish. Lucky you're with Amy. Trilby Misso Lawyers. 1800 800 813. Serving all of Queensland. 1800 800 813 for Trilby Misso Lawyers. It's all here. Everything you want is at Caneland Central with Big W, Target, Woolworths in Action and over 120 stores and services. And for the very best in fresh food and great value, check out this week's Best Buys. Economy beef rump steak, $5.95 a kilo, save $3.98 a kilo from Woolworths. Grab any $2.50 loaf and a pull apart for only $5.80 from Baker's Delight. And chicken cordon bleu, for only $2 each from Leonard's. For all your shopping, Caneland Central, managed by Lend Lease. Relax in cool comfort this long, hot summer with the help of Porter's Home and Building Centre. Grab a great deal on a quality air conditioner right now at Porter's. There's a size and model to suit all needs. You can do at Porter's with much more than a hardware store. You'll find almost everything at Porter's, so don't swelter again this year. Invest in an air conditioner from Porter's Home and Building Centre. Yes, we can. Jenny Stevens didn't expect this, but what was totally unexpected, at Amy, we'll offer you temporary accommodation while your home sweet home isn't so sweet. Lucky you're with Amy. Hello, the spell of good tourist weather continues on the coast, but showers are expected to develop in the onshore winds around midweek. Warm inland though, Claremont reached 37 this afternoon, Morambar hit 36, Collinsville 35, Proserpine 32, Bowen 30, Mackay's top today was 29 and the Whitsundays 28. The southeast change is on its way. That's the band of cloud extending from the Tasman to Brisbane. The thin line of cloud along the border is associated with an upper level jet stream. Today's chart shows the trough extending from the far northwest to Coffs Harbour and moving north with highs in the Tasman and near Adelaide. Tomorrow the trough will fracture over the southeast corner and slide west again. Wednesday's chart has the centre of the high close to Sydney with a broad trough through central Australia. Now checking on the word from the Bureau. In coastal waters from Bowen to St Lawrence, winds will turn southeast and freshen to 15 to 20 knots, with southeast to easterlies of the same strength Wednesday and Thursday. From St Lawrence to Harvey Bay, north to north easterlies will reach 10 to 15 knots, ahead of a 15 to 20 knots southeast change in the afternoon. 15 knots southeast to easterlies are expected Wednesday. 
High tide is in Mackay at 10.53, Shoot Harbour at 10.50, Bowen 9.53 and Port Alma at 9.14. Central Coast and Sundays will be fine tomorrow with moderate southeast to northeast winds, fresh at times near the coast. Wednesdays mostly fine with isolated showers on the coast Thursday. Capricornia is mostly fine with isolated afternoon and evening showers and storms, mainly in the west. Wednesdays mostly fine with morning showers in the north on Thursday. Central Highlands and Coalfields will have showers and storms tonight, contracting to parts northeast of Emerald tomorrow. There'll be isolated showers and storms in the west and south Wednesday. Thursday is looking fine. Now to tomorrow's tops. Mackay and Gladstone are both heading for 28, Rockhampton 29, Bowen's top will be 30 and the Central Highlands 34. Longer term, coastal showers are possible right until midweek. And Rob, that's the way our weather is looking and it's going to be very warm again inland tomorrow but rather nice on the coast. Thanks very much, Rosanna. Thanks for your company tonight, folks. Kay and Rod have seven news coming up next. We'll see you back tomorrow night at six. From all the team, take care. Good night. Tonight, a potentially deadly flaw in many of Queensland's frontline fire trucks. Police risk their lives to rescue a man after a chase on the Sunshine Coast. And foreigners, the firm favourites on the eve of the Melbourne Cup. With Kay McGrath and Rod Young, this is 7 News. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of 7 News. Tonight, it's my pleasure to welcome Rod Young to the team. Thank you, Cam. Looking forward to it. Good. Well, first tonight, a Brisbane man accused of kicking a New Year's Eve reveller to death has walked free from court. The victim's parents have lashed out at the legal system which let their son's attacker go. 21-year-old Corey Gibson never uttered a word as he left Brisbane Supreme Court a free man. After just four hours of deliberating, a jury found him not guilty of murder or the lesser charge of manslaughter. It's a verdict Roy Alcock and his wife Helen will never accept. We've been waiting for this day and we're thinking that maybe we got some justice, but unfortunately we didn't. Their 29-year-old son Greg died on the corner of Anne and Boundary Streets in the early hours of New Year's Day last year after a drunken brawl with Corey Gibson. The jury heard just before the fight, Greg Alcock wished Corey Gibson a happy new year. But it was then things turned horribly wrong and a fatal scuffle erupted. Greg Alcock threw the first punch after he was called a homosexual, but that swing missed. The pair then hit each other repeatedly before Corey Gibson allegedly kicked Greg Alcock in the neck. They had to prove without, beyond reasonable doubt that the kick was what killed him and I think they couldn't prove that beyond reasonable doubt. Now, I hope it's a lesson that the bloody law system needs a bit of wakening up. Kim Skubras, 7 News. An urgent program is underway to fix a life-threatening defect discovered in a significant number of Queensland's fire trucks. Two of the service's pumpers have been left disabled during bushfires. More than 100 others face similar problems. They're the pride of the fleet, the new Scania, worth more than half a million dollars each, but with one potentially deadly flaw. The turbo engine that gives them their power also makes them a fire hazard. Any burning embers that come close to the front of the vehicle will be drawn in. Once inside, there's nothing stopping those embers setting fire to the cardboard air filter. In recent bushfires at Camira and Cairns, two of the trucks caught fire. The union newsletter warns the first crews knew of the problem was the unexpected shutdown of the Scania's engine. 25 of those vehicles and also quite a number on order so we've got to find a, um, a permanent solution before those vehicles arrive. In the meantime all those trucks will be fitted with a simple steel mesh supplied free by the manufacturer. We're hoping that the ember will actually sit on there and burn out before it goes in there and becomes a problem. The biggest concern for firefighters is the pumps are powered by the engine. When the motor stops, so does the water. Well, I don't think any, any firefighters' lives have been placed at risk in any way, shape or form. But the service warns any turbo truck could have this fault. They currently own 100 and by January next year, almost the entire fleet will be turbo powered. The vehicle can burn. We can uh, always replace that, but you can't replace the fireman. Michael Coombs, 7 News. 
Air safety investigators say two pilots killed in a light plane crash at Archerfield last year had not secured fuel caps. Their plane crashed moments after takeoff, narrowly missing a truck stop. The co-owners of the twin-engine Piper Comanche had been conducting a test flight on May 23rd last year. Both qualified pilots, they were killed instantly when the plane crashed in fading light. Among the victims, Nairi Moxley, a three-time winner of the Air Woman of the Year Award. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau's accident report confirmed the left-wing fuel tank filler caps were not secured before takeoff. Fuel vented from the left wing had the appearance of smoke and the pilots were unable to maintain control of the aircraft. The report also details the final communications between the pilots and the control tower. On takeoff, this from the tower. Charlie, November Zulu, there's smoke coming from one of your engines. A pause, then it's the left engine. Ten seconds later, Charlie, November Zulu, did you copy? From a pilot confirmation, we're shutting it down and request a left turn back for landing. It's now known the engine wasn't leaking smoke, but fuel from the uncapped tanks. Seconds later, the plane crashed. Investigators believe the pre-flight inspection may have been hurried because of deteriorating light. The fading conditions could also have prevented the pilots from seeing the unsecured fuel caps on takeoff, which occurred just after sunset. David Salmon, 7 News. There's been a dramatic end to a police pursuit on the Sunshine Coast overnight. Officers dragging a man to safety from his burning car. A grass fire erupted when the vehicle burst into flames near the Big Pineapple. The driver was overpowered by police after refusing to leave the car, which was seconds away from being engulfed by flames. The man was unhurt and appeared in court this morning on numerous driving offences. Child sex offenders face tough new penalties as part of an overhaul of laws approved by State Cabinet today. Anyone found guilty of indecently dealing with a child under 12 could be jailed for 20 years. As well, police will get new powers to run special operations against pedophiles who use the internet to lure their victims. The Australian Democrats have warned the full sale of Telstra is all but dead following damaging revelations against the communications giant. The opposition wants a royal commission, but the government's ruling it out. At Alice Springs today, John Howard had his own opportunity to test out Telstra's services in the bush. But it's city services that may bring the government's privatisation plans undone. Claims Telstra costs small businesses millions have led to new allegations the carrier committed perjury and even tapped telephones. The government says it happened a decade ago and Telstra paid compensation. The bad old days when we didn't have customer service guarantees or network reliability frameworks when Telstra fixed your phone when it was good and ready. The Minister has now ordered an inquiry by the Australian Communications Authority. But those who suffered say it doesn't go far enough. Why is he now sending it to the ACA? This is just a nonsense. It's another deflection. The opposition agrees and continues to demand a royal commission. What has the government got to hide? What has Telstra got to hide? So far, the Prime Minister is supporting Telstra. They've denied the allegations and at this stage uh, there's no case for a royal commission. But in the Senate, the allegations have hardened opposition to any further sale of Telstra. And the timing couldn't be worse, with the government's pre-sale report on bush services due at the end of the week. Well, I think it is going to make it more difficult. It'll make uh, senators more wary. I think the government's plan to sell off Telstra is dead and buried. In Canberra, Glenn Mel, 7 News. Well, with Australians preparing to gamble millions, the imported horses are still the favourites on the eve of the Melbourne Cup. Paddy Welsh is at Flemington. And Pat, how's the weather holding out there? Okay, a few showers here in Melbourne today, but not enough really to change predictions of a good track. Tonight, Media Puzzle remains favourite, but some big money's changed hands today for Distinctly Secret. Whatever happens, this city is ready for Australia's most watched sporting event. <laughs> The Melbourne Cup Carnival left the track this morning for the annual parade of champions through the city streets. Past and present Cup characters part of the procession, some trying their luck a day early. Oh, uh, now about that party. Really the police may not be as tolerant at Flemington tomorrow where a record crowd of more than 120,000 is expected. 
In light of recent terrorist activity, police have already scanned the course and the VRC has increased security. The club works closely with um, the Victoria Police Force and all other authorities and we have our own contracted security force on course so it's a, it's a very secure venue. Also under scrutiny, the best credentialed runner in the cup, Vinnie Rowe. The Irish stayer hasn't been himself and finished off his preparation with some light work with stablemate Media Puzzle this morning. Every day Vinnie Rowe just, you know, picks up a little bit. He's still that bit of weight to make up, but what we have, we have. Godolphin's formidable three, Pugin, Hatharana and Beekeeper, were put through a more arduous hit out the lighting connections. Uh, I was happy really with them. They are in good form, good condition. You know, and um, I think if there is any rain coming also, it will help them. Clearing chows are forecast, but this Flemington track should still be rated as good, which will suit Australasia's best hope. Distinctly secret rattled home in the McKinnon Stakes on Saturday for trainer Mark Walker. The young Kiwi has only been training for four years and believes he can upstage the Northern Hemisphere horses. It's a level playing field and uh, the worst bred and cheapest horse can win a two mile race. And Distinctly Secret was well supported at the call of the card, as was Vinnie Rowe and Rain Gage. But the biggest bet of $63,000 was for Beekeeper. Paul Gregg, 7 News. And some big racing news from here tonight. Gay Waterhouse has been charged by VRC stewards with giving false evidence over the scratching of her star platinum scissors before last Saturday's Victoria Derby. They're now investigating betting sheets and she'll face them again on Friday. As for the Cup, Seven's tipster Max Presnell is sticking with Media Puzzle. Personally, I think... Finney Rowe can get the uh, the bacon tomorrow. Good luck. Seven's exclusive cover, of course, from 9.20. It's going to be a fantastic day. And Rod, by the way, great to have you on the team. Thanks indeed, Pat. Pat Welch from Melbourne. Well, still ahead tonight, startling World Health Organisation claims about Australia's hospital care. Police nabbed the posh Spice kidnap gang. And a 200-car pile-up turns a freeway into a wrecking yard. Jack Bowen is about to become expendable. Dennis Hopper is a mass murderer. You're insane. And he wants revenge now. Drop your weapons! Don't do it, Power! 24 tonight. There's bottles galore at your Spotlight store. Stop! Today only Spotlight is slashing 15% off everything. 15% off every product in every department, including sale items. Until 9pm tonight, take 15% off everything at all Spotlight stores. LG's Jet Cool Air Conditioner blows icy cold air into the room stronger, further, and faster. Happy birthday! Mom. Happy birthday! So now even the coolest air conditioner has its warm moments. LG, life's good. You'll have to be an early bird. Rush into Woolworths tomorrow. We're stretching our red spot sale to the limit. 20 to 36 pack Huggies Convenience Nappies. Just 10.98. That's 10.98. Saving you 2.95 tomorrow only. And seedless watermelon. Now 77 cents a kilo. 77 cents a kilo. Great value. Monday only. We're stretching our red spot sale to the limit. So get in early before it's too late. Only at Woolworths tomorrow. North Jacklin Nissan are clearing out all 2002 floor stock to make way for 2003 models. The legendary Nissan Patrol now comes with free bull bar, free tow bar, free tailored mats, free headlight protectors on all models in stock. Stocks are limited, so don't miss the North Jacklin Nissan floor stock clearance sale. The good old days are back for horn sewing cabinets. Now you'll pay only $3.99 for this horn deluxe special with most of the features you've always wanted, including horn's famous lifter and loads of storage space. But hurry, the horn deluxe special for a limited time only at these horn retailers. North Jacklin Nissan are clearing out all 2002 floor stock to make way for 2003 models. Only pay home loan interest rates on Pulsar sedans and hatches. Australia's best value for money small car has never been more affordable. Stocks are limited, so don't miss the North Jacklin Nissan floor stock clearance sale. It's a party every night on the carnival from tonight at 10.30. Fun, frivolity, stars and party people. We have a great time every night. Celebrate Melbourne Cup Week with Roy and HG. The party begins tonight, 10.30. 
Victorians will go to the polls at the end of the month. Premier Steve Brax today announced an early election for November the 30th. Opposition leader Robert Doyle has been in the job only 10 weeks but says he's prepared for the battle. The World Health Report has made startling claims that Australian patients are four times more likely to suffer adverse medical outcomes than those in the United States. Medical groups have attacked the figures as flawed. Delivering the World Health Organization's biggest research project, Dr Alan Lopez said there were some surprising revelations. The report is a wake-up call to governments. It suggests an alarming 16.6% .6 of patients are likely to suffer measurable harm in the Australian healthcare system. That's compared with just 3.8% in the United States and 10% in the United Kingdom. The Federal Health Minister and AMA say the figures are wrong. That would be alarming if it were true. Not it's apples and oranges, they're not comparing the same things. Dr Russell Stitt says Australian medical care is first rate and that's partly demonstrated through the life expectancy figures contained in the same study. At 71.6 years, it's the fourth highest in the world behind Japan, Switzerland and Sweden. The report also suggests Australians could live an average six years longer if they better heeded their health warnings and governments took some bold steps to address the risk factors. We've made major inroads with smoking where tobacco has come from two-thirds of the population smoking down to less than one-fifth. But it's still the main contributor to preventable deaths, along with high blood pressure, alcohol, obesity and high cholesterol. Kathy Wise, 7 News. A car pile-up in California has put dozens of people in hospital. Almost 200 vehicles were involved in the chain reaction, including seven semi-trailers. At least 40 people were hurt, many with critical injuries. A mass funeral has been held for the 26 children and three adults killed in last week's Italian earthquake. The service was held in a huge tent, the young victims in white caskets. Afterwards, they were carried in a procession to the village cemetery. The children and their teacher all died in their school building, which collapsed in last Thursday's quake. British soccer star David Beckham has upgraded security around his family in the wake of a plot to kidnap his wife. Nine people have now been arrested after the scheme was brought undone by a British newspaper. The scene was a quiet car park in London's Docklands district. Four members of the gang thought they were about to be paid for some stolen antiques when suddenly they were surrounded. Journalists from the News of the World had infiltrated the group six weeks earlier while investigating an art theft. They soon learnt of the kidnap plot with its high-profile target. Who? Victoria Beckham. The gang had staked out the Beckhams' home. Their plan was to grab Victoria when she arrived and subdue her with a chemical spray. As long as you keep her quiet, which I'm sure the spray in a... What I'm going to sleep. Asleep. Baby will have a good sleep. The couple's young children were also fair game and the gang was prepared to be ruthless to get its money. One week to bring that amount of money in there. Yeah. If it's not in there, I'm going to cut her in pieces, that's all. The newspaper finally went to the police when it was apparent the plotters were about to strike. You can see uh, that these guys had planned pretty meticulously what they, what they intended to do. And if, frankly, they didn't get the money, their, their plan was quite simply to, to kill Victoria. In all, nine people have been arrested, although so far none has been charged over the kidnap scheme. Phil Black, 7 News. Harry Potter's latest exploits have had their world premiere in London. The Chamber of Secrets is the budding wizard's second instalment and likely to be an even greater money spinner. Harry Potter! Potter mania is just as big as ever. The success leaving young star Daniel Radcliffe speechless. I just, it's, uh, I, I, it's, yeah, it's just unbelievable. A thunderstorm and a curse on a batch of dodgy umbrellas sent author J.K. Rowling scurrying for cover, but there's no hiding from the popularity of the series. The first Harry Potter film took nearly $2 billion at the box office. If book sales are any guide, this film should be just as successful. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets has sold 42 million copies in as many countries. Ah! 
In the film, Harry Potter and his friends are pitted against the dark forces trying to destroy Hogwarts School of Magic. It's classic in the sense that it's been it become so available to so many people. It's become this phenomenon which isn't a marketing phenomenon. Harry Potter returns to Australian screens later this month. In London, Darren Linton, 7 News. And sports up next with Ben Davis. Thanks, Rod. Welcome aboard and welcome to sport, everyone. After the break, the latest betting on the Cup favourites. Leighton Hewitt down but not out in Paris. And an Aussie test shock. Vice Captain Adam Gilchrist in hospital. She's no fairy godmother. I've been accused of sexual harassment. And she's lost her job. So what's the good news? I'll hire you. A night of fun when Dame Edna and Bon Jovi guest star. <laughs> All new Ally McBeal tonight. There's bottles galore at your spotlight store. Stop! Today only Spotlight is slashing 15% off everything. 15% off every product in every department, including sale items. Until 9pm tonight, take 15% off everything at all Spotlight stores. Get a piece of the action. Big choice, big value and more than 2,000 specials every week. Check out these action-packed bargains. Save 50 cents on 2-litre classic hit soft drink varieties, only 99 cents. Save 68 cents with so good 1-litre soy drink varieties, just $1.69 each. Fresh, juicy peaches, $4.98 a kilo. Save $9.04 a kilo on boneless leg ham, almost half price at just $9.95 a kilo. Stretch your dollar further with our exclusive basics range and get more for your money at... Action! Marge, Marge, the rains are here. McCain Super Juicy Corn Cobbets. Specially grown to be super juicy. So juicy, they're simply bursting with flavour. Ah, oh, McCain, you've done it again. It's the ultimate inner spring sale. Ultimate brands, ultimate choice. Ultimate savings of up to $1,000 off across the entire range. The Captain Snooze Ultimate Inner Spring Sale. Reason to choose snooze. For the first time in Mackay, Glenwood Homes have teamed up with a major Australian lending partner to offer genuine no-deposit house and land packages. There's no messy savings plans. Once you qualify, we'll build your new home in a choice of quality subdivisions. Genuine no-deposit house and land. To qualify, you need to attend the No Deposit Home Buyer Seminar one night only, 7.30pm Thursday, November 7 at the Ocean International. Seats are limited. Call Glenwood Homes to reserve your free place. Do you have time to meet 100 Bank? We do. Smart borrowers use the Deakins Mortgage Bureau's free home loan service to find the best home loan and the cheapest interest rates. Before you sign up for any home loan, call now. You choose. We get it approved. Adam Gilchrist has sent a scare through the Aussie camp just three days out from the first Ashes test at the Gabba. The Australian vice captain is spending tonight in hospital with an infected elbow. While his teammates trained this afternoon, Gilchrist was hooked up to an intravenous drip, a simple pimple stumping the Aussie keeper. Uh, it's a bug that's managed to get into his bloodstream and it's infected the area locally, so um, we're not sure what the bug is, but he's had a broad spectrum antibiotic. Everyone um, expects him to make a speedy recovery, um, and I'm sure he'll be back on deck uh, come the first ball of the test match on Thursday. Let's hope so. In last year's Ashes series, Gilly averaged 68, belting 340 runs with a highest score of 152. Still, if pass fit, will he be 100%? We have had these things in the past, and, and they can present they can present a you know a debilitating problem, especially for a. A top athlete. Another headache for selectors, which quick will carry the drinks. Tomorrow's fitness test on Gillespie's calf could be the decider. Decisions two for Steve Wall. He's got to find fielding replacements. Too many head knocks. A bat pad forces Justin Langer out wider. Well, Mark Wall's no longer at sleep. Oh, I think uh, either Ricky or or um, Damien obviously would be the obvious choice there. Um, you know they've always been the extension of our slips cordon anyway. Meantime, Rain and Michael Vaughan have saved England in the tour match against the Bulls at Allen Border Field. The opener's classy 127 helped the visitors stay alive until bad lights stop play. Whiz kid Nathan Horrocks had them in a spin, claiming three for 48. And the venue's namesake is back in friendly territory, Allen Border crossing the border on his charity walk from Sydney to Brisbane. Australian of the Year Pat Rafter has thrown his support behind good mate jockey Damien Oliver for tomorrow's Melbourne Cup. And that's the way the bookies see it. Media puzzle heads the market in front of stable mate Vinnie Rowe and fellow European Pusion. Cups King Bart Cummings' only runner, Miss Melissa, is at $26.
Well, beaten, but still number one. A Leighton Hill at Safford, a rare straight sets loss overnight, outgunned by Russian Marat Safin in the final of the Paris Masters. But the Aussie remains on track to finish the year atop the world rankings. With just one tournament left in this year's Masters series, Hewitt leads Andre Agassi by 88 points in the champion's race. Only a disastrous performance in Shanghai would see him ousted from top spot. Unforced errors, though, proved costly against Marat Safin. Hewitt fought hard after losing the first two sets. The Russian was unstoppable, claiming his second Paris title. Not a happy day at the office for local favourite Carlos Checa in the season-ending MotoGP in Valencia. The Spaniard stalled on the grid and Cardoza slammed into him. Both escaped serious injury. An upset up front, Brazilian Alex Barros pipping Valentino Rossi, denying the world champ a record 12th win for the season. Max Biaggi was third. And more spills in the prestigious New York Marathon. For the first time, the elite women's field started before the 30,000 other runners. But it didn't stop Australia's Commonwealth Games gold medalist Karen McCann from getting caught up in the crowd. McCann's stumble left her with a scraped knee and seventh place behind Kenyan Joyce Chipchumba. Victoria Carthew, 7 News. Thanks, Vic. And for what it's worth, my tip, distinctly secret for the Cup tomorrow. Time will tell, Ben. We'll keep an eye on that. Thank you. Well, our share market gained around 1.5% today on expectations of a Wall Street surge. The ASX 200 closed 44 points stronger. The HP Billiton led the resource sector higher. Shares in News Corp jumped more than 5%. Macquarie Bank also made ground. And the Aussie dollar has broken through the 56 US cents mark. We'll check Brisbane's fuel prices after the break. And Tony Johnston has the latest on our stormy weather. to marry her. I think Brody's one of the luckiest girls around. But she's made other plans. Can he change her mind? Next on Home and Away. Right now, we're trimming everything, including our prices, with trimmers from only $249. So clean up with Still Today at your nearest Still Specialist dealer. Well, let to what you want. At First National, we've been listening. So we know you want the best advice on preparing your home for a quicker sale at the right price. So we've put together a free 24-page home seller's guide so you can learn all the secrets of selling your home. Call First National now for your free home seller's guide and... Turn to First National. We're listening. Today only, Spotlight is slashing 15% off everything. 15% off every product in every department, including sale items. Until 9pm tonight, take 15% off everything at all Spotlight stores. This Tuesday, Oz Lotto jackpots to $10 million. Oh, that's wild. And with $10 million, you'll certainly have enough for your wildest dreams. So get your Oz Lotto entry in now. It's Super Amart's Melbourne Cup celebrations. Look at the prices. Lounge suites, 100 off. And these, again, 100 off. Entertainment units, 100 off. Pillow top ensembles, 150 off. Sofas, lowest prices. No deposit. Interest free. Timber chests, reduced. Five-piece bedroom suite, never cheaper. Lowest prices on futons. Solid timber blinds from $29.95. 80 off recliners. No deposit. Interest free. Look for our jumbo 24-page catalogue. Check these out. Melbourne Cup celebrations. On now. Only at Super Amart. Mmm, now that's fresh. That's Fruit World Fresh. Bananas, one seventy nine a kilo. Nectarines, two ninety nine a kilo. Rock melons, ninety nine cents a kilo. And onions, seventy nine cents a kilo. Mmm, now that's fresh. That's Fruit World Fresh. The week started on a positive note for motorists. Petrol prices were down by an average one and a half cents a litre in Brisbane this afternoon. Best buying in the northern region was at the United in Albion. In the south, it was Shell in Shaler Park. The east's pick was Liberty in Cannon Hill, and the west's was Matilda in the Gap. Well, weather time now, and plenty to talk about tonight, Tony. Yes, Kay, it was an active afternoon, wasn't it? Well, as forecast, a line of storms move through the southeast from the west late this afternoon. The radar shows that the storms have been strongest around Crow's Nest, Esk, Caboolture and Bribey Island, represented by the purple and red areas. There have been reports of hail, strong winds, heavy rain and lightning. Now, the Weather Bureau has just downgraded the severe thunderstorm warning, although they'll be around for the next couple of hours. Now, in the wake of the storm, the current temperature in Brisbane is still quite warm on 25 degrees.
degrees. Despite the cloud, today's temps were still warm as well. It didn't feel, it felt quite humid as well, didn't it? Archerfield, Toowoomba, Ambly and Logan City all reaching the 30s. Our Earthwatch satellite image shows the distinct band of storm cloud that developed along the trough line during the day. Now today's chart shows the inland trough in a line extending from the Northern Territory right down through the state to the Darling Downs and into New South Wales. The trough has had the familiar warm northerlies ahead of it. The coastal section of the trough is moving north as we speak, bringing those showers and storms. A high will follow tomorrow with cooler southeasterly winds, so we can look forward to that. Around the nation and all eyes on Melbourne tomorrow, they're expecting an early shower clearing to a fine afternoon with a top of 20 degrees. Across the state, scattered showers and storms over northern and eastern parts ahead of a cooler southeasterly change, increased dust over the interior. A look at the coastal conditions now and the winds will be 20 to 25 knots south southeasterly tonight easing to 15 to 20 knots southeast to easterly tomorrow. And there are the tides and Brisbane Bar Cutting will see its first high of 2.4 metres at 9.39 in the morning and the high will follow just after 4. For the southeast, showers and storms clearing tonight, mostly fine and cooler tomorrow with only isolated showers nearer the coast. The Sunshine Coast, Brisbane and the Bayside looking at tops of 26 degrees. And looking ahead, fine through until the weekend with a chance of a shower there on Saturday. Good luck tomorrow on the Cup. I'm no expert, but as the weatherman, can't go past rain gauge. Kay and Rod. Thanks Tony, that rain dance worked. Well that's 7 News this Monday, thanks for being with us. And Rod again, we're delighted to welcome you to the 7 News team and we're all looking forward to, uh, to working together. It's really great to be here Kay, thanks. And I hope you'll all join us again the same time tomorrow night. Thanks for your company and have a good night. It's your country. 7.30 tonight on Wind Smallville. Then at 8.30, Vegas has a dark side on a gripping CSI, followed by undercover drama with stingers. With Bruce Page and Gillian Whiting, this is National 9 News. Irish invader takes the Melbourne Cup. The media puzzle goes to the line to win the Melbourne Cup. An emotional win for Damien Oliver. The Melbourne Cups don't mean a thing to me anymore. I give it back right now to have my brother back. Good evening. Good evening. Damien Oliver has turned tragedy into triumph with a bittersweet win in the Melbourne Cup. Booting home Irish stay a media puzzle, there wasn't a dry eye at Flemington as Oliver dedicated his victory to his brother Jason, who died last week after a track fall. Above everyone else, Damien Oliver was the public pick. While parties raged around him, the grieving hoop had to stay in control. Come